Hi, it's Ed with Free Circle. Hope you're having a good day. Just want to share a few things with you this afternoon. Uh, we are doing a few different things and moving forward with our goals. And it's it's about learning and spreading learning. And as we progress, we get closer to our goal. So that's that's what we're doing. We have we we have to stop, slow down, find your words. Chill. Thank you, Fireman Rich, for introducing me to Vocal. It is a good platform. I was checking it out yesterday. I have been looking at the features and I have decided to implement that into my learning platform that I am using currently. So as I build my learning platform in the background, I am going to start using this tool to implement the things that I need in my site and and it actually helps me because to host video on your servers you need special things let's not complicate it there's special things that need to be in place and if not your video will not work on your site so your server has to be able to carry the capability of video and that is kind of expensive so we we tend to look for alternatives when we do that and i ran across vocal there are links in the comments to i'm going to do a live show this evening at 9 p.m pacific standard time over there i'm going to familiarize myself with the platform a little more and that is going to be my evening show place because it does allow the video people can actually see who I am and become more personable with me so I'm going to start a nightly show every night except Friday night because at dusk Friday, I shut things down until Saturday night. So, yeah, we're going to start implementing that and schedule that out. And I like the scheduling feature over there, the way they profile you and give you a nice graphic in the background of the description and then whatever you're going to discuss. So, a unique feature of this is they allow you to download like Dialog does here, but they also allow you to download an MP4. So, they allow a download of an MP3 file, which is great to implement into an RSS feed off of your WordPress site, but also, you can implement that video MP4 into your WordPress blog. And so not only can you push out a audio, you can actually add that feature to your blog every day. So I, I'm kind of liking it. And I did do a test run just simply to uh, see how it is and how it works. And I like the video. It renders out very nice and it comes out clear. The audio syncs with the video. It's a pretty good little platform. I'm impressed. Uh, as with dialogue, they're improving. So I'm interested to watch both platforms see how they progress and i want you to follow me you know i've i've got a lot of irons in the fire and i'm teaching myself to
to schedule out again. So I've got myself a daily planner that's really nice and it's got a block calendar for the month and then a day section that I can line out my miscellaneous chores and keep myself on task a little more, orient my day towards a goal. So I've been working long and hard to change who and what I am. And it's been a challenge. It's been a journey, but by God, I'm doing awesome and I'm going to go forward with it. Pain is nothing compared to, uh, <laughs> how do you, how do you say it? Well, we'll leave that alone. Anyway, pain is something I'm accustomed to now. You know, I've always been kind of numb to pain, but you know, when I, when I got injured, boy, I never felt pain like that before. So it threw me into a tailspin. Well, learning, learning is the key. The success to coming out of whatever you're in is learning. And part of learning is participation and understanding others and getting guidance and direction from others. So that's why we are working hard in the background to present the Free Circle Learning Hub. It's an e-learning system that we're putting together. And I've about got the system laid out where my course and everything is set. Now all I've got to do is implement the video, the structure, the content, and release it. So first quarter of 2019 is my anticipated release date of this new system. And I'm telling you, I'm impressed. I, I didn't think I could do something like this. And the more I get into it and understand, hey, I've always applied myself 150% to everything I do. And whatever say, I say I'm going to do, I will do it. See, I've dabbled with electronics, computers, and since they've come out, you know, it's nothing new to me. It's just I haven't kept up with the technology. I mean, I was doing basic coding, VB basic with the Tandy TRS-80 back in what it was the early 90s or I don't know, it might have been the 80s. Who knows? It's been too long to recount. But I've always had this drive towards, uh, I don't know, I, I've always been fascinated with websites, web design. I've done several websites back in the day, and I should have kept going. However, I found a good, successful line of work, and I kept with it, and I was satisfied, and it kept me intrigued, and, you know, it was dangerous, and I got beat up and hurt a lot. So now I'm finding my passion again for my old self, and it's paying off, you know, just just by... The sheer amount of, wow, I did it. That's enough for me. You know, I, I, I have come a long ways and I'm going to keep continuing. And I'm actually keeping track and I'm keeping a journal of my journey, what I've went through and how hard it's been to overcome challenges and difficulties. And... Becoming a nicer, understanding person out of all of the anger, the violence, the atrocities that I've come through, emotional, physical, I'm impressed where I am now. 
pain is nothing to me. I'm getting over that. I'm learning to uh, get a good, solid diet and keep it with good balance. As we age, we need fiber. I've figured that out. And probiotics is excellent. Cleansing your system, good flushings. So learning, it's a powerful thing. You know, when you're young and a cheeseburger and fries, Coke and all that was quick, easy, and I didn't care. I didn't have time to think about that because I was always fit. I was always healthy. And it's hard on a man when he gets to the point where he can't perform like he used to. So to understand there's going to be a point in time in your life that this happens, the earlier we can understand that, the better we can recognize we've got to change who, how, and what we are. So learning is essential. And the older I get, the more I understand the value in learning and pressing on and passing it on. And that's why I've developed and I've devoted so much time into what I've been doing on the backside of things. A lot of us don't see the hard turmoil, hard work and struggle and turmoil that just our general lives throw at us. And then we try to climb out of it and it's not easy to teach an old dog new tricks sometimes but i'm telling you it can be done it's just the will to do it and finding the right way to do it finding the right tools and putting them in place uh, developing a plan developing the skill sets that you need to do it and doing it as one person that's a hard thing to do. So there's a lot to developing a website, putting it together, keeping it uh, active. You know, search engine optimization, you have to be active with your website. So that's a vital thing. And through this e-learning system that I'm putting together, it's going to help promote my search rank engine uh search rankings in the search engines so there's a lot of these old skills that i used to have that i'm rehashing i used to do live cast all the time on blog tv and uh when what was that google hangout came out and i used to do a morning uh show with uh chris and it was fun it was a way to wake up inform the world of what was going on and talk to your friend so since i changed the way i am <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> let me clear my throat <clears> the <throat> <The> memes <clears throat> Since I changed who and what I am in life, I've lost a lot of my old acquaintances and trying to find and uh, adapt to new acquaintances, it's very hard to do. So finding the skills and putting them together, it's, it's tough when you're, I don't know, it's, it's something that we carry on with. And we should keep on carrying on. That's what learning is about. So there is a lot in place. We've, I've, I stood back and I looked at what I was doing and I saw, wow, that's, that's pretty good from where you were. So all you've got to do is keep going and it will get better and better and better. So no matter the struggle, no matter what life puts on to you, 
you keep going. Find somebody to lean on. Somebody that understands and connect. It's hard to do that. So that's what we're doing. We're adapting ourselves. We are coming out of our reclusive attitude that we put ourselves in because of what we went through and we're finding new direction in our life because yesterday morning I went on the get vocal site and I was talking to a few of those gentlemen over there and you know it's it's true 50 is not old when you really start thinking about it it's just midlife so at one point i asked for assisted suicide i was hurt so bad i wanted to end it it was done finito and then bam all of a sudden somehow i found true hope another direction and it took a long time i didn't understand what was happening to me i had to learn learning is key so i pulled myself up out of it dialogue helped me with that and i'm grateful for that you know i i don't always do the best but i try so I'm learning how to develop skills, how to understand other points of view. I found that to be the most important. When I closed myself off and I had one particular insight and one, this is it, this is how, I, and I still slip back into that. I digress into my old attitude because it's easy to digress so you've got to recognize as quick as possible and pull yourself back and start learning you know we progress every day we've got to give our insight and how we develop skills it's up to the individual because i was i was actually going back in my mind earlier today with my wife and we were discussing back in the fourth grade is when I developed this block on learning because I had a teacher that did not like me for some, I know the reason it was because of my past brothers or my brothers in the past that came before me. I come from a big family and you know, my, my brothers were rowdy. So where I come from, you had better learn to fist fight because you're going to need it. Because if you don't, they're going to take what you have. And when you live in that environment, you kind of get in this shell and it's hard to get out of that to find humanity again and care enough so struggles in life we have to learn to develop skills learning is key and sometimes we just have to look backwards and see how far we came so to get back to what i was saying just a few minutes ago me and my wife was discussing the fourth grade. Here I am. I want to start teaching people. But yet, I have to be a student again to learn how to teach because I've never taught. You know, I have, but I did not develop skills to teach. So now, I think of things, I, I really think hard on things and I look at myself as that little kid and this big man. I mean, Mr. Stricker was, he was six foot four 
and he was an athletic build man. And I'll tell you, he broke a couple paddles on me, but I had hacks just about every day. And I had one recess in the fourth grade because he didn't like my brother. You know, I, I always had, I've always been a, a introvert. So I always wanted to sit in the back of the class and be not noticed. I didn't want people to notice me a lot. But he demanded that I sat right up front so he could watch me because of my brothers before me. And I understand where he was coming from, but I put myself back in that terrified young man and the things that he had to go through and the blockades that that man put on me. And now I'm here at the age where I want to be the teacher. And I look at that and I look at the psychology behind that. And I want people to understand, to develop skills from where I came from and where I am. (laughs) It's all self-taught because I did never trust a teacher after that. So I had to develop every bit of what I've learned. So now I'm relearning what I learned before in a new way. I have a, a vocabulary app. Every day I get a new vocabulary word. And I try to implement a new vocabulary word into my dialect. So, you know, the willingness to learn. If you let the naysayers and all the BS in this world get to you, you'll never find the inner strength to be who you are. To let people recognize where you have been and what you have done. That's hard to do when you're used to being a fighter and when you get it's a fight or flight syndrome and I'm taking time to look back in my life and understand these critical control points that's that's an issue how we have to learn about ourselves We have to identify these critical control points. And once we understand that point in our life, we can look back and we can dissect and we can really analyze with an adult brain what happened way back then and how we can change who we are today. So learning is the key. We want to die. We want, we ask them, let me get a drink of coffee. My, my, uh, I'm parched. Put some glasses on. Oh, we do have five listens. I don't know if you're in the room. You're welcome to join if you'd like. We're talking about learning and coming out of, uh, nasty behaviors and going into good behaviors and how to get there. So anyway, what I have been doing is I've been working hard to develop these skills to understand how to change and develop life skills that are going to enhance my life. I, I always focus hard on you know, labor. I've always been a maintenance man, uh, auto repair, uh, small engine repair, tractor repair, chainsaw repair, computer repair. You know, back when I was a young man, before it was legal for me to work, I used to go in Clarkston, Washington on Sycamore Street. There was an appliance store named Teed's Appliance. And old man Teed was 
excellent. He taught me so much. He took the time. And, and, you know, I find it interesting. Nowadays, nobody would do this. The way society has changed, (laughs) it's interesting. But old man Teed, he had this appliance store, and people used to bring toasters, uh, vacuums, televisions, uh, blenders, radios, all sorts of things in to have it repaired. And I used to come in as a young man. I started hanging around Teed about nine, ten, because that's when I started really having troubles at home and wanted to flee from it. So I found other people to hang around. And I'm glad I did find these people to help develop certain skills within me. But Mr. Teed, he had an appliance store and he let me tinker in the back and he taught me quite a bit how to, he started off with me with just replacing cords. People would bring a lamp or something that needed a cord, a new plug-in put in. So he would work with me on, okay, there's a positive and a negative. You've got to, you know, so these little things, Things that you have to know about certain things. He was teaching me. He took the time and he taught me. He got so comfortable with me by the time I was about 12, 13 years old that he would just leave me at the shop and he would do his mobile runs where he would go pick things up or whatever he had to do. He would leave me at the shop and I would fix things in the back. And when the bell rang on the door, I would come do the, here's your blender, uh, fill out the ticket and put the money in, give the change. So all of those trusting things that that old man did for me when I was young and he did it for free. I, it took me years and years and years to understand what this was all about. And I look back at Anna, an old lady that took time out of her life, taught me things for free, how to make lard lye soap, how to can preserves, you know, strawberries, uh, jellies, whatever. My first taste of canning came from that old lady, Anna. She took her time out of her day to teach a troubled youth how to change. And and I did not understand at the time what they were doing. But they were taking time out of their day to teach me. They didn't have to do it. And... That's why I can look back now and say that little guy that was badgered in the fourth grade is gone. Who you are now today is so much different. You've come so far from that. You, you've. I used to work on assembly lines. 150 pound Cleaver Brook boilers, tube fire. And, you know, to tear one of those down, make sure the computer system and the diagnostic boards were working properly, all the floats and the safety gear, to have that much responsibility. You're not a stupid man. So just changing how I learn and what I'm doing, there's a learning curve to it. So developing means learning. When you stop learning, 
well, you're going to be that guy I was, I'd say, about 10 years ago now. Just kill me. I'm done. And how I thank God that did not happen. Because what I have to offer and what I have yet to pull out of that carpet bag, <laughs> it's, it's a doozy. So the learn... The learning in our lives really matters. And the time we take to develop skills, but more importantly, the time we take to heal ourselves and understand who we truly are, that's when we start healing truly. So... Yeah, look back at that moment, that critical control point in your life. And there's probably several of them. There are for me. And I've been attacking them. Straight on forward, every bad thing that has ever happened to me, I'm looking at that, I'm learning to deal with it and move on from it. Because those things will, oh, it will weight you down in life. Learn to give it up. Learn to develop. Learn to carry on. But most of all, don't take advantage. Give advantage. I'm Ed. I'm with Free Circle. We're developing tools and tricks to help young individuals that are misguided and it's progressing well look for new changes we're changing the website freecircle.website tonight we're going to do a vocal at nine o'clock pacific standard time if you'd like to join in come on over and click grab a seat there's a chat room so it's hard to get your face out there, especially when you've got an ugly mug like mine. I don't like putting it on video much, but I got to get over that. So that's my next challenge because let's, let's, before I do close out, I want to cover that a little bit more. Uh, so on this platform over there uh, get vocal they say it's like uh, what is it blab never used blab so I'm not really aware of what blab is but they do have a four window structure where four video cameras are able to transmit video into one frame and that one frame is divided into four parts so you have the ability i see a lot of usefulness and i'm going to implement this see during when i get things set up and i've been well i won't get into all that anyway the four part screen here the way I intend to implement this into my e-learning system, I plan on being able to, because they offer the ability to download those fees, I'll be able to put them over onto my website and database those. And that way when they're queried out, uh, and you do a search for them, you'll be able to pull past lessons and data up. But as I'm using this to film these private courses, because this is the unique thing over there that I found out, you can actually open a private room 
and only share the link to individuals that you want in the room. So with that feature, I can take that, I can put uh, a premium feature on my learning end that I plan on doing for a premium feature where you'll be able to get on and schedule an online uh, video conference with me on that and I'll have one camera on myself and then with my mobile app on that site, I'll be able to use that as a uh, mobilized camera and I can zoom in on features as I use my face to keep communicating with the client. I'll be able to use that mobile phone camera in one of the other blocks to zoom in like on the carburetor and show the client this is what it is and if they've got a project with them on their platform they can do the same have one square where they put the video of them on and then use their mobile phone to show me their problem and it's an easier way to identify. As an ex-master service technician for Briggs & Stratton, I'm always looking for these ways to teach people. And this is... I went through and I looked for an application, how they were allowing people to interact and learn about different things online. So during my research, I found that all of them suck. They don't know crap. Excuse the language. But um, yeah, most of them will not give you a disclaimer and tell you, look, what you're doing is very... Uh, delicate and when you get into rebuilding a carburetor and you punch through to that transitional passageway if you screw the carburetor up because you don't know that you've got to be delicate with it well that can't be my fault so you've got to identify if it's in a box it's double people and a lot of shop owners know what I'm talking about you get uh, people bringing their equipment in. They want to tell you uh, there's not much wrong with it. They tried to fix it, but there's not much wrong with it. Well, I've had them come in a box. I mean, tore down. And through factory training back at the factory... They give you a failure analysis training and you're able to look at it and know that they're full of whatever, you know, like, well, I can tell you by looking at that piece of equipment, sir, this is what happened. And I'll tell you, I've had some big monkeys get pretty mad and want to basically box me over me telling them take their box and get out. You know, I've, so identifying these uh, points of interest, you, you have to know people will tell you a lot of different things. But in actuality, reality tells you, okay, well, I don't, I don't call many people on many things, but when I do it for a business... Yeah, I'm going to call you out. That's that's where I draw the line. And a lot of people don't realize you have to learn how to execute that properly. Because you want to be able to have that return customer. You want them satisfied when 
you they leave. And if they bring it back, I'll, I'll tell you one, one little thing about most people with a lawnmower, particularly. I had so many people bring me a lawnmower. They just brought it into the shop and it was serviced. And they cut the yard once. And now it doesn't work again. <laughs> really? Did did you put gas in there? Well, of course I put gas in there. Ah. So I I, I already know what most of these things are when they come up to me. And I say, okay, look, what happened is you've got dirty gas in your gas can what you've got to do is you've got to put a strainer in your gas tank or an inline filter and watch the type of gas that you put into your equipment what you've done is you've got water or dirt particles and they're inside that float bowl and give me five seconds. We're going to drop this. It's a seven sixteenths or a half inch box end wrench. Whip it off. Show them. See, there's your problem. Boom. Dump it out. Put it back on. And one start again. Well, what you've done is you've identified a problem for your customer. And you can tell them this is exactly what you did. So avoid it in the future. It will save you shop cost because most people aren't like me. They would have just said, yeah, well, check it in. We'll get you, you know, in line. Well, that person comes back every year for uh, maintenance. Why would you just treat him like that? Identify where he's messing up so he knows, oh, I'll correct my action, okay? And you say, no, no charge. You just serviced this. Just remember not to do that next time and tell your friends. And yeah, join us next year for your service. And if you need any parts or anything like that, remember me. And I'll tell you, I built a few shops up with that very technique where the shops were making pretty darn good money. Let's put it that way. And, uh, honing these little skills and understand. And when here, let's back up for a minute. When I took over the shop and the owner said, okay, well, I want you to be my shop manager. I said, okay, well, let me manage the shop then. Okay. Stop because I have a certain way. That's kind of how I did things. And I was very organized and structured. I used a computer and networked the computer upstairs and downstairs together so we could I we could communicate without him coming downstairs, see, uh through a local area network. So when I, when <laughs> Scott, he comes down one, I, I forget what he came down for, but I'm out in the back with a return customer every time doing exactly what I just explained to you about the carburetor because his office is actually right above the double door shops and when somebody rolls in picks up or drops off he kind of sees and but he's obviously looking out the window and he sees me working on that out of ticket turn and he wants to come down and correct me for that wait a minute who's the shop manager <laughs> and what type of return on investment are you getting out of the shop since I took it over? 
these are techniques that I've implemented into my shop to make you money. Please, Scott, go upstairs. And it, it took him back for a moment, but he understood exactly what I meant. Well, that person's going to tell 10 people of the service, the quality. This is part of learning, learning how to please in the right way. So there's a lot of skills that people have to develop and understand to be a good person, to pass their learning on freely. So that's what I'm doing with Free Circle. I'm developing ways to pass on knowledge for those that need it the most, I want to make it free. And those that can afford it, I want to offer premium services. So in the background of what Ed has been doing for Free Circle, I'm developing a way to get out of my situation. And I'm developing ways to bring my family out of where we've been. But most importantly, I'm developing skills and a place to make sure somebody is going to learn something and maybe a little easier than what I learned. So it's critical to me. What I'm going to focus on is homeless that's the number one. My number one thing is homeless people. We have to do something about all of these things. Drugs, homelessness. There's a lot of things that I think about. Humanity is hurt. And it takes people willing to step out of their box, their comfort zone, look at other people with compassion, understand we are all different, and we all have been in places that could terrify you in your mind. So never look at somebody and just go, oh my. Understand, you don't know where that person has been. What that person has been through. And how to interact with each and every person you meet. It is critical, it is critical to learn about each other. I'm Ed with Free Circle. You can find me at freecircle.website. Google Free Circle. Check us out. Join us this evening, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at our new location, Get Vocal. And, yeah, let's learn to love and understand each other properly. Until next time, I'm Ed, Free Circle, out.